Clankier plunged arms stripped of armor deep into the chest cavity of the skinless man, the one whose uniform gave his name as M. Geraldus. Their apothecary had gone to great lengths to keep him alive for as long as possible, and he breathed still. But though his eyes were lidless and impossible to close, they looked upon distant vistas neither brother could see. There is a peace in them that Kalenvar found fascinating. Only minutes before, the man had been screaming uncontrollably. The peace of his last moments had gotten to his brother. Kalinkir took a deep, shuddering breath and wrenched out his hand, bringing with it the mashed remains of the man's heart. With one final clack of lipless teeth, the Sothan perished. See what we do to those who will not aid us, shouted Kalinkir. He lifted his bare, blood-soaked arms high over his head. Tell us where the Ultramarines went, and we will be merciful. His boots squelched in bloody mud as he walked up and down the line of Sothans. There were five remaining, kneeling at the edge of the gory clearing, a bolter to every head, forced to watch the torture and death of their fellows. Those that had shut their eyes had had them opened permanently. More than one stared unblinkingly, their cheeks tracked with blood. But they would not answer the question put to them. One was close to cracking, Govanisk, his name Ribbon proclaimed. A tremble afflicted his lower lip, and as he rigidly looked forwards, he could not stop his eyes dancing up to rest upon the face of the space marines before he remembered his terror and snatched them away. Geraldus, Govanisk, Glendivar supposed they all had names, these feeble little people. They all had lives. He found it odd to think them as human, or that he had been that way before his elevation. Mortal, weak, and doomed to die at the hands of the strong. He owed the Emperor that much, nothing more. You! Kalankir placed the sword tip against Govanik's chest. Glendivar's senses of misguiding increased. He experienced a moment of profound vertigo where he could not tear his attention from the sword. It hummed in his brother's hand, eager for blood itself. Speak! Tell me which tunnel the Ultramarines took and you shall die easily. Do not and you are next. I will begin with your left eye. He moved his sword to hover millimeters from the soldier's face. The pain you will experience as I pull it slowly from your face will be unbearable. If the cries of your comrades do not illustrate it adequately for you, experience it will. Kalinkir put up his sword. Barathor! A knife! A cruelly serrated blade was pressed into his hand. The warrior behind Kavanis gripped his head in crushing hands. Kalinkir came towards him. The soldier let out a series of choking sobs as the blade came close to his face. And now we begin, said Kalinkir. No, mercy, please, please, shouted Govanesk. The middle tunnel! <laughs> they went down the middle tunnel. He squealed pathetically. His captor released his head and he pawed at Kalinkir's greaves with filthy hands. Kalinkir pushed him back with his foot. His fellow looked sidelong at him, disgust on their faces at the craven capulation. Do not judge, said Kalenvar quietly. Someone always gives in in the end. If he had not, it would have been you or you, he said, pointing. Once the knives begin their work, he looked around at the broken bodies at his brothers. Eighteen of them, piled up around the edge of the clearing. You were worthy foes for mortals. Think of that as we send you screaming to your deaths. The soldier did as he was commanded and gave up the information. He was sobbing, snot and tears running down his face. Your name is Govanisk. Yes. <laughs> yes, my lord. Govanisk. Well, Govanisk, you have our thanks for your information. Glendvar pushed his combat blade into the man's belly and slid it upwards. Govanus screamed loudly as he was eviscerated. Glendvar dropped him into the mess of his own spilled guts. A cow is reward. Kill the others cleanly. He turned his back on the captives. The shrill cries of the Sothran irked him. Four shots ring out. Brain matter and chips of bloody bone pattered against the back of his armor. Four bodies slumped into the crushed vegetation and Govanus screamed on in agony.